This is Greg Trowine, and we're here today with Jonathan Flynn, Director of Clean Energy Solutions at CF Industries. CF Industries manufactures and distributed ammonia for more than 75 years, and it recently joined the Maris McKinney Moeller Center for Zero Carbon Shipping. Jonathan, to start us off, can you give us a by the numbers look at CF Industries today, something that gives a size and a scale and a scope to your ammonia operations? Yeah, sure. Happy to, Greg, and thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Uh, so CF Industries, we're the world's largest producer of ammonia globally. We produce over 10 million tons, which represents approximately 5% of global production. Uh, of this, about a third of our ammonia production we sell as ammonia, as a fertilizer or an industrial or chemical feedstock. The other two thirds is upgraded uh, mostly into either nitrogen fertilizers or uh, diesel exhaust fluid. We make quite a bit of that. In total, we sell somewhere between 19 and 20 million product tons to give you a perspective for scale. Um, and so really, you know, with CF Industries, our mission is to provide clean energy to feed and fuel the world sustainably. Uh, we're focused on reducing our carbon intensity uh, by 25% by 2030. We want to be net zero by 2050. Um, in order to achieve those goals, we're currently in the process of developing a number of low carbon ammonia projects. Uh, we're constructing a green ammonia project, which simply is ammonia produced uh, by electrolysis of water using renewable electricity. We're also uh, constructing a blue ammonia project, which is uh, ammonia produced the conventional way, natural gas. Uh, we then sequester the resulting carbon emissions uh, to reduce the carbon intensity and in the footprint of the product. Uh, we're also expecting to make a decision on another major blue ammonia project later this year. So we've been very active uh, in this space and, and are moving forward quite a few projects. Um, but, you know, can we talk a little bit about ammonia production in the round? Because, uh, you know, ammonia still is a relatively new, particularly, uh, obviously, a fuel as it is in the maritime space. Um, you know, how much is produced and consumed today? And can you give some insights on the global leaders in both production and consumption? Yeah, sure. Happy to. So ammonia, historically speaking, is really one of the most important chemicals produced today. Uh, it's primarily been used as a nitrogen fertilizer or as a feedstock into other nitrogen fertilizers. Uh, and really the, the point is to enable you know, atmospheric nitrogen, all the, most of the air that are around us to be converted into a form available for plants. So that's really where ammonia came from. Uh, today, about 200 million tons are produced annually and it's a truly global commodity. It's produced around the globe. About 90% of the ammonia produced today is used as a fertilizer and the remaining 10% is used as an industrial or chemical feedstock. It makes plastics, synthetic fibers, things like that. About 20 million tons are traded globally today, and the vast majority of that's moved uh, internationally by ships. So a big part of the, the maritime industry is a big part of moving ammonia around the world. Um, the industry is very fragmented on both the production and the consumption side. So production occurs in something like 40 countries around the world. Um, and consumption would greatly exceed that number. As you can imagine, people use fertilizer in just about every country that supports agriculture. Um, we're the world's largest producer. We represent about 5% of total production. So when you think about the industry, yeah, just very fragmented and nobody has a real significant uh, you know, market share overall. Um, you know, like I said, ammonia is obviously still a very new fuel to the maritime industry. But as you pointed out, a lot of it is traded globally via ships. Uh, many of which uh, obviously use ammonia as fuel today. So I'm sure there'll be a lot of lessons learned from that. Um, you know, we talk about future fuels, alternative fuels in the maritime sector. Um, and by some projections that I've seen, you know, ammonia will be kind of tipping the scales in 2035 um, as a dominant uh, fuel towards that decarbonization. You know, I guess I could probably answer this question myself, but, you know, what was the impetus for CF Industries to join the Maersk McKinney Moeller Center for Zero Carbon Shipping? Um, I guess, basically, what are you hoping to add from the conversation and what are you hoping to take from the alliance? Yeah. Um, so, you know, when we think about tackling you know, the challenge of global warming. It's really a monumental task and not something that can be accomplished by individual actors or companies. And so... We see collaboration as a key, which is really kind of a change for us as an organization as we kind of went down this clean energy route. Uh, you know, we think bringing together you know, knowledge and expertise of key stakeholders uh, within the maritime industry, but also others that are not traditionally part of that industry, such as ammonia producers, uh, is really you know, a necessary step for finding and implementing solutions, decarbonization solutions. So specific to the center, we were really attracted to their vision and the caliber of organizations that comprise the, the partnership. 
Um, their vision is to sustainable decarbonization of the maritime industry by 2050. They're effectively an R&D center that's really focused on accelerating the decarbonization of the maritime industry. The uh, focus is you know, actions we can take today, but also how do you get to the net zero by 2050. Um, their partnership really includes some of the biggest organizations in the maritime sector, major energy companies, energy traders, you know, large consultancies, all of which you really are focused on decarbonization and put it as a forefront of their strategies. Um, you know, specific to what we bring to the center, we, we have a very deep understanding of the ammonia industry. Um, we proactively are decarbonizing our operations. We're developing both green and blue ammonia projects today. We have a deep understanding of the global ammonia market. We have expertise in safe and reliable production, storage, and distribution of ammonia. And I'll stress the word safe. Uh, and so, you know, we're really hoping to bring that knowledge to the maritime industry. And we just felt joining the uh, center and, and becoming part of their partnership is really the best way for us to accomplish that. You know, Jonathan, obviously I'm no ammonia expert, um, but from what I understand, the production of ammonia contributes to the greenhouse gases um, and to truly make a positive uh, contribution. The production of green ammonia is the ticket. Um, can you give us a little insight? Where are we today? What needs to be done uh, to get green ammonia to production at scale? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I think, you know, from our view, we think the world's going to require significant volumes of low carbon ammonia, both green and blue, um, are really going to be needed to make significant positive contributions for the world's emissions. So green ammonia certainly is, is attractive as a no carbon production pathway. You know, we're currently developing a 20 megawatt green ammonia project ourselves. Uh, we believe it'll be the largest of its kind when it comes online, which is scheduled for later this year. And so we really see a, a large role for green ammonia in the future. And we're right now, you know, currently developing all the necessary expertise and know-hows to, to enable us to scale that up. Um, there are certain significant challenges with green ammonia uh, before it can really fully scale. Uh, one is just the ability to produce this uh, renewable energy you need to power the units. They're very energy intensive. So it's just manufacturing ammonia itself and uh, requires a lot of renewable electricity today, which isn't uh, necessarily available in the kind of quantities we're talking for, for full scale up. Also, we need to procure significant volumes of electrolyzers. Uh, and so as that industry is ramping up, you know, you can only move as fast as the supply chain moves. Um, and so kind of both of those things really lead to a higher cost of, of green ammonia production today. But we think, you know, folks like ourselves and others that continue to develop and invest in these, you know, kind of early stage projects really drive up that demand that'll have the benefit of lowering cost and increasing scale. So while these challenges are being resolved, you know, we see low carbon blue ammonia as having a significant role to play that will allow the decarbonization of not only the existing ammonia production, but also, you know, scale up to support demand for low carbon alternative fuels for ammonia as a low carbon alternative fuel. And so with blue ammonia, you know, you can reduce the carbon intensity of ammonia production by about 95% using carbon capture and sequestration. So this is really a significant and scalable net benefit to the environment, even with partial carbon capture and sequestration, you hear a lot about maybe 60 or 70% reduction. Uh, the emission profile of, of ammonia, even with those levels, is really favorable to many conventional fossil fuels, both in the maritime industry, but also the power generation industry. So, you know, we see a big role for both green and blue, and, you know, we're developing mostly blue projects today, uh, but also green projects, and kind of we see a transition occurring over, you know, the coming decades. Uh, you know, we talked about safety just a couple minutes ago, and as I as I said, one concern in maritime circles uh, regarding ammonia as a fuel is its caustic nature and its hazard in the event of an accident. From your point of view, what are some of the most common misconceptions that you see about ammonia, and what do you see as the keys to safe transport, transfer, and use? Yeah, that's another great question, Greg. So I think you know, the biggest question we just see is people unfamiliar with ammonia concern that it is not safe, uh, when in fact we think it, it is. You know, our company, CF Industries, we put safety as our top priority above everything else. Uh, I always tell people we give out one award as an organization, and it's an award for safety innovation. Uh, that's the only thing we really uh, kind of recognize, you know, uh, amongst uh, across our company. Um, you know, frankly, there's hazards inherent with every fuel, and this includes ammonia, but also fuels used by the maritime industry today. You know, similar to existing fuels, ammonia has a long history. We've been making ammonia for over 100 years. Uh, we've been used, doing so safely and reliably. Uh, there's a very large knowledge base available that can be leveraged and applied to the maritime industry. 
Um, so not only has the ammonia industry really learned how to safely operate, and maintain you know, equipment in ammonia service, but we've already leveraged these learnings to enable the safe use of ammonia by other industries and other users who, who do not work with ammonia regularly. Uh, for example, farmers use ammonia as a direct application fertilizer, uh, and they do so safely and reliably and, and you know, with some basic know-how and, and good procedures in place, uh, you know, that's, we're able to do that. And so we really think by combining the knowledge uh, of the existing maritime sector uh, with all their safety innovations, along with the experience of ammonia producers with all our safety innovations, you know, we think you can achieve you know, safe design and operation of, of ammonia fueled uh, shipping. You know, as I said before, we think collaboration is the key. So part of the impetus for us joining the Maris McKinney Muller Center, you know, really, we think that's how you handle this. You know, as I've said, uh, the maritime industry is exploring many future fuels at the moment, and many estimates show that ammonia will become a strong contributor after 2035. From your point of view, when you look at the maritime industry today, what potential do you see and where? Yeah, we see a, a lot of potential for ammonia in the maritime sector. So I think, as you know, and probably your readers know, Maritime industry is really a significant contributor to global emissions and is also a hard to carbonize sector. So we see a lot of potential to use ammonia as an alternative low carbon fuel for this industry. You know, ammonia can be produced with low or no carbon emissions. It has a higher energy density than some of the other alternative fuels, you know, maybe not the traditional fuels, but certainly compared to some others alternatives. Um, you can already find ammonia in 190 seaports globally, so it's already widely spread. Uh, it's a chemical. It's been used safely and reliably across a number of industries for for a very very long time. Um, you know, us specifically at CF, we ship about 1.8 million tons of ammonia annually by the water, uh, whether that's you know in, in ships or vessels or by a barge. So significant experience, but for us, but also others in the industry, I'm moving ammonia via the water. Uh, so really, kind of uh, deep knowledge base there. Um, and so you're seeing a lot of early adopters as well have kind of already identified themselves that are really trying to move forward with ammonia as an alternative low carbon fuel. So you see companies joining industry groups like the center, the Maris McKinney Center. You're seeing, you know, Man ES uh, develop uh, ammonia engines and others are developing vessels. You're looking at companies trying to establish ammonia bunkering uh, as well as, you know, green corridors and other pilot projects. And so you know, we see a lot of activity here and, and these first movers ourselves, you know, CF Industries included, are really identifying and developing you know, solutions. We're driving down costs of new technologies. We're enabling and, and building infrastructure and developing supply chains that will all be you know, scalable uh, to support the decarbonization of the maritime industry. These are certainly exciting times. It's these types of uh, these kinds of tech evolutions and revolutions that keep us all going. So again, Jonathan, I very much appreciate your time and I'm sure I'll be reaching out again in the future. Yeah, thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me. This has been uh, great to talk to you.